Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Build a Mission in DCS World. It's been a minute since we got started, but with the release of the Hind today, I figured today was a good time to get back and take a look at how to build a FARP. Now, once again, we're going to uh, use a template here. So, well, actually no, on this one I don't think we will because the template's still locked into the position of that particular location. But, let's go ahead and we're going to use this field back over here and let's get started. So we're going to first find our static objects and we need to find do, 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 heliports. There we go. There's our FARP. We have FARP single and invisible FARP. Oh my goodness gracious. That is new. You're kidding me. Oh my gosh, guys, I am just beyond myself right now. How cool is that? Wow, I am really stoked by that. Sorry, that dumbfounded me. Okay, so that is definitely a new development, and that is absolutely fantastic, and I'll tell you why. So here's what we had before, okay? We had this, this big giant thing with the big green pads and everything like that, and that's great for, like, the Caucasus map, okay? Absolutely fantastic for it. It works pretty much anywhere, but when you start getting to desert fields and things like that, it just doesn't work very well. And so, ah, oh man, I am blown away by this. That is awesome. So let's go ahead and check this out. We're going to learn something here together, guys. So I'm going to take this back and go to the invisible section here. Now, I don't know that rotation matters anymore, but we're going to go ahead and turn it sort of facing like that just to see what happens. And then right away, what I'm going to do is call this. We want to change the location. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, that's right. Megiddo. I really hope I'm saying those names right. Uh, so that's an E and a D D O. And then we're going to do an underscore FARP. And uh, you could call this something else if you wanted to. Um, you know, maybe like FARP Alpha or something like that. But we're just keeping this simple for today. Okay. And then now we're going to see if I still have an old template that I had used a long time ago. Hopefully I do. If not, we will recreate it, but it will save some time for you guys and listening to me talk. So let's see here. It is add template. Ah, we do indeed. Farp blue four. So we're going to grab this and we're going to go thunk. Now these are all, let's close this before we add any more. These are all required vehicles for FARP to function out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, you have to have all of these near the FARP. So we have a Humvee Jeep that's going to be serving as comms. You have the vehicle here for a refueler. It's going to be a tanker. And then this one here um, for supplies such as ammo, etc. Um, now we also need um, a few more items here, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But we're going to build this out and make it kind of cool first. So let's go back into our static objects and we're going to grab our first requirement here. And that is going to be do 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 do. Sorry, I keep yawning. Been a long day. Um hopefully it's under structures, but every time I think I still remember where stuff is, they move it. So we're just going to sort of work our way down here. Comms towers are always cool. They just add a lot to it. So we're going to drop this guy in now. Notice this may be a little hard for you guys to see, but there's four cables coming off of it. So you want to sort of pay attention to those. So let's just sort of turn it, right? You can do something like this. And I'm just going to sort of set it out here up front. Okay. Because if this works the way I think it's going to, our helicopters are probably going to park somewhere around here. But we'll see. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And then, let's see here, we can still move these guys, but we got to figure out who is group number one, I think you. So let's do something like this, and we'll see, maybe like that. Grab our fuel truck over here, and we may have to play around with this a little bit. Like I said, I've never seen this particular setup before, I'm really excited for it. As far as the invisible FARP goes, I'm so blown away by that. I mean, this this could really open up a lot of really cool options for gameplay. Um, and then we need, <clears throat> excuse me, there we go, FARP ammo storage. We're going to want one of those. 
Now, unfortunately, I wish they had like a desert camo version, but I'm sure that's something that will come down later down the line. I mean, they, every time I touch one of these, they end up changing it. Now I'm gonna control C this one, and I'm gonna do another one like over here. You know, something to give it a little bit. You wanna bring the farp to life, right? And you can get really crazy with this stuff. And then let's go back to our static page. And we're gonna want a command post, of course. Okay, maybe that's gonna be like over here. And then again, you can title these as you wish. I'm just gonna leave it as is for the moment. Um, we'll change the titles in a minute here. And let's see here again, a fuel depot. Definitely need some fuel. And let's maybe store it back here by the tanker. And again, I have no idea where our guys are going to end up here as far as our helicopters. But let's just see what happens. So let's do a control C. Get that guy tapping there. Again, do three of them. Oh, come on now. And we could always add more trucks if we want. Right now, I'm just trying to keep it pretty quick and simple. And then now's the time where you sort of spruce it up a little bit, right? You got the necessities. These are all the necessities right here that are required for a fully functional FARP. So from here, you can start getting just having fun. Like the FARP tent is not a requirement for the FARP to be functional, but it does add something. So let's do like, um, let's set one up here, all right? And then here we'll do a couple of these guys. Maybe there, one there, one there. Let's do like three of them here. All right, and that should be good for that. Now I wanna see the important part. Oh, we don't want an airplane, we want a helicopter. So FARPs guys, till you understand, you can refuel, and this is where this um, invisible FARP really comes into play, if it works the way I think it does, is that you can use it, for example, for the Harrier. Um, you can use invisible FARPs, you know, ground FARPs and things like that, so. Um, is it just me or just saying the word FARP sound weird? It sounds like you're playing with some sort of kid's toy. Anyway, so let's do the MI-24. We're going to do client, obviously. And I'm going to click it right here, and I'm going to say take off from ramp and see what it does. <gasps> oh, it does. Okay, so let's see how many we can do. All right, so we're going to call this, I don't know, um, Blizzard. Blizzard 1 is these guy's name. Let's do that underscore, makes it easier. And then here we want blizzard one dash one. And if it, oh, nope, 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 no waypoints yet. Settle down there, killer. Don't get ahead of me. And uh, let's arm it. Gotta have some armament. Boom, look at this thing. This thing is so cool. If you guys haven't got this yet, totally buy it. It's freaking awesome. Um, so what do we got here? What is this? That is bomb. Boom. Let's do, yeah. Let's just do the mean loadout. I mean, just, yeah. Yep, I'm good with that. I'm good. Do we have, what kind of uh, parent schemes? Anything? Uh, we're going to have to find a paint kit for it. All right, so we're a little overweight here, so what we'll do is just take the fuel down. Ooh, we can't go very far, can we? We're going to have to watch our fuel, guys. Uh, do we have a lighter loadout here? Maybe this one instead. That's still 95% right there. Wow. 97, 98, I guess, well, 58% fuel. All right, we'll leave it at that. That works, that works. All right, so Blizzard, and we got Blizzard 1-1 one, one in here, and let's do a quick tap. Oh, that underscored it. Oh, so it takes it from the title. That's right, I forgot about that. That's new to me, sorry, guys. So let's see what we got. Blizzard 1, uh, Blizzard 1-1, one, one. still taking it from there, so I don't want you to do that. So let's do this. Let's pull that back out, give it a space, take this down to 1. Do that, and let's do Blizzard 1-1, one one. oops, now if I add two, there we go, three and four. All right, let's see what happens here, because this is, this is awesome. All right, and I think that's all I need for here. We're going to hit save, and let's load into our mission, check out our FARP. And seriously, guys, I can't stress it enough. Get the hind if you're into rotors at all. Um, it's completely different than any other helicopter we have flown in DCS World yet. It's nothing like the Black Shark. It's nothing like the UH-1. The UH-1 is 
far more forgiving. Heck, even the Black Hawk, or a Black Hawk, Black Shark is more forgiving than the Hind. Um, she, she'll kill you. She'll absolutely kill you, but uh, it, it's big, it's beefy, it's powerful, it's fun. All right, let's get rid of that bottom toolbar there. Let's go into our blue section, and let's find our Hind, and let's see where it puts us today. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, oh, no rolling, no rolling. Why are we rolling? We shouldn't be rolling. All right, let's go to our external view. Oh, so we're on a little bit of, of a slope. So we may want to move, but you guys see what what's happening here. So take a look at your scenery and let's just see if we have any other options. Maybe up there on that hill. Move it to that next section back. You guys see that back there? It's a little bit flatter up there, but all in all, still kind of cool. Very awesome. That is too neat. It drops it right in the center. So I'm kind of curious what would happen if we had multiple spawn units. That might be something we'd have to take care of. So let's do that. I'll show you how we check. Well, ugh. yep. Who? Good. I'll show you how we test that. We're going to go back to our mission editor, and all we're going to do is click on our hind. And you know what? Actually, let's let's go ahead and move that because that's just it's very clear. That's not a good spot. And sometimes that's what this takes is a little bit of trial and error. I'm trying to think. It was right about here. I think that it looked better. Um, let's grab these guys. Okay, they're clicked back over there. And then just move everything over a little bit. Nothing too crazy. I kind of liked most of the layout there. It looked pretty cool. I don't know about you guys. I thought so. We can take this. And I think we're going to move things maybe back over here like that. I'm really worried about how it's going to present those other helicopters. But we're going to find out here in just a minute. And whenever I have to move things like this, I just grab them and pull them and then zoom in afterwards. Do I sound like Bob Ross to you guys? I feel like I'm talking like Bob Ross. Like, just just go ahead and just give a little pull. Just bring that guy right on over here. You know, it's, it's okay. Just that happy little fuel truck, you know? Anyway, <clears throat> there's your celebrity moment for the evening. I'm going to sort of reset this here like so. Nothing to perfection here. If you're looking for perfection, you're not going to find it on this channel. All right. And then what we're going to do is to click on our hind. Come on. There we go. And we're just going to change it from client to any of these veteran, whatever. doesn't matter. Hit save. And we should be able to see how all four of them spawn. And hopefully they don't turn into a big giant fireball. Oh, darn it. It didn't change all four of them. I wanted it to. Well, we'll still get an idea on how two of them spawn, at least. Which will answer my question still. Oof. Yeah, we're on top of each other. There's our problem. So, that kind of sucks. So maybe there's a better way to do this. Let's go look. The FARP should still be able to resupply and refuel even with this next method that I'm going to show you. And this is what a lot of building these missions is all about, guys, is just trial and error. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take these to take off from ramp to take off from ground. By doing so, and I'm also going to bring these down to just one helicopter for the moment. Okay? And by take off from ground, we can leave the FARP where it is. And now we should be able to customize the starting positions of these aircraft. So, for example, we're going to take this one, put it here. And then we should be able to add our next helicopter and do the same thing. So put him, like, here. And let's see what we got here. We want to keep them still relatively close to the FARP. That, that's kind of a requirement still. We're going to take a next one. Bring it over here. And again with one more. Bring him back over here. And that should give us what we're looking for. Now let's change all of these over to... Um, AI. Okay. Just like that. Hit save. 
Let's see what we get. And because they're starting AI units, it should actually start on them, if I remember correctly. No, nope, maybe not. There we go. Let's go into spectators. And let's see what we got. And there they are. So, awesome. Absolutely freaking perfect. And that's going to open up a ton of battle room for you. Now, let me show you the test features that you want to test when building your FARP. Okay, because it's not as simple as just leaving it as is. You want to make sure you do some testing. So we're going to put these back to client. And mostly just because they'll get really loud here in a second as they start up and go flying off into nowhere and then land again. But let's go back to save. Okay, let's go to blue again. And now we're going to hit our simple radio button, the backslash button. And we want to test a few things. You should be able to go to ground crew. And let's test ground electrical power. Chief, turn on the ground power. Copy. Cool. Got a copy. And you should see ground power is now on. Perfect. So, and then let's test the rearm refuel. That's obviously something that you're going to want to test. Okay, so it looks like that is functioning, but let's do, um, I don't know, let's reduce the fuel a little bit. Request refueling. Request refueling. We're just looking for it to say copy. Request rearming. We're looking for it to say copy. Boom. Perfect. And uh, let's see here. I can't think. Let's check wheel chocks and tie downs. Let's see here. Place wheel Chief, chocks. Place the wheel chocks. Refueling complete. Copy. Oh, there's the copy. Let's go to F2. Let's see if we got it. I don't even know if wheel chocks are modeled for the helicopter, truthfully, so for this particular aircraft. So they may not even be modeled. I maybe have uh, gone a little far with that one. Or he may be waiting until we finish with the rearming process. So, anyway. So, that is it, guys. That's the basics of creating a FARP. And from here, once you have these requirements, you've tested the rearming and refueling. Oh, here. Rearming complete. And there you go. Wheel chocks are now placed. Let's look. Uh, yeah, they're not modeled. Oh, that's a bummer. That's all right, though. Um, anyway. So whenever you do these, you test your rearming, you test refueling, um, test electrical power, make sure that you can do that. And then after that, you're good to go, guys. Um, and then from, you know, once you have the basics down and you verified all those steps work, it's just a matter of decorating and doctoring it up the way you like to make it look cool. But there it is, an invisible FARP. We all learned it together. And that is absolutely perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. So... Um, another cool thing about an invisible FARP that I will show you guys real quick, if it works the same way the other FARPs do, is you get this. This is why that's important. You get a call sign for it and you get a frequency for it. And if you need to link it to a unit, I don't know why you would, um, but you can. But uh, So that's the, that's the advantage versus just throwing these helicopters out anywhere is that you get the radio frequency. Okay, and that's why the comms unit, the Humvee, is required. Okay, um, so anyway, I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys like that. Happy mission building. Happy flying with the new Hind. And uh, in the next one, we're going to start getting into setting up some combat areas specifically for the Hind, as clearly that's what I'm going to be focusing on for a little bit because it's fun. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.